Now, the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge have been touring the Far East, and when they were in Singapore, they were presented with the Van der Orchid named in their honour. It's the latest in a long tradition of naming flowers and plants for royals. Singapore said it with flowers, welcoming William and Kate to the Botanic Gardens with an orchid named in their honour, Vanda, William and Catherine. <laughs> Nearby, another white orchid, which for William was particularly poignant. It was grown for and named after Diana, Princess of Wales. She died just before a planned visit here in 1997. It's beautiful, said William, beautiful. Indeed it is. Here with a look back at the diplomatically delicate art of royal floral tributes is royal historian Kate Williams. <laughs> it does go back an awful long way, this business of not only naming flowers for members of the royal family, but also giving to them as a, as a sort of peace offering in a way, isn't it? You're so right, Alan. I mean, right from the beginning of monarchy, monarchs have wanted beautiful flowers to decorate their barges, their palaces, and they've they really prided themselves on being the best florist ever, created the best flowers. King Charles II, he got the first pineapple ever, his yeah. gardener made that. So really, royals expect to have beautiful flowers, and we've seen so many amazing flowers this year, the Diamond Jubilee flotilla covered in flowers, and flowers everywhere. And Presented in poses at the Olympics. At the Olympics, yeah. and it's just so apt that we now see William and Kate having their own flower yeah. named after them. Of course, William had a flower when he was just a little baby, just born, his own he little rose. rose yes. called the Royal William. William. Royal it was William. called Royal William. That's right, a lovely red rose. It's it grows beautiful. at Windsor in that it's big beautiful. rose garden. Exactly. Yeah. And, they, and I mean, the Queen herself is such a keen gardener. She loves the Royal Horticultural Show. She loves seeing about flowers. She loves finding out. So she's such a keen gardener. So she's fascinated by flowers. And I think it's great that we've seen William and Kate in this tour being surrounded by these flowers, yeah. these and get, getting these beautiful flower gays around their heads. The flower, the, the kind of the, the whole setup is so beautiful. And it's enabled them in a way to get over this this whole ridiculous scandal about you know the, the pictures and whatnot it's not the first time that scandal happened when royals have been overseas it there are, they've had to get over things like that for donkeys well know. yes I mean royals tour so much that often something breaks at home I'm, I'm thinking particularly in 1992 when so many things were going wrong in the royal family the Queen had to tour Canada just after Diana her true story was published mm. kept smiling kept a straight face the only royal tour that's ever been interrupted was in 1974 when the general election was called so the Queen had to come back but otherwise they keep going and they keep keep smiling and I mean we all have to admire how William and Kate haven't shown their emotions they they've, are well they just very brave. spread that usual magic which is their job that's Absolutely. what they do they the future spread... king and queen yeah in the happiness game well one man who knows all about the happiness game and royal flowers and flowers for royals is the florist Simon Lysett <laughs> Waxing lyrical about the use of flowers on royal occasions, and we've got here, you know, examples. It's been orchids in Singapore and, and the Philippines and the tropics out there, because that's what they have. It's, it's always... been orchid-tastic, and one of the <laughs> most amazing flowers that has been named for them is the, the Vanda William and Kate. It's too soon for us to have one, but these are just some of the amazing Vanda orchid these flowers. These are Vandas. They're all kind of... Orchidaceae, the orchid family, is the largest plant family in the world, bar none, even more orchids than daisies. The Vanders are these these spectacular colours. Incredible, colors, the colours, the markings, and they're a great flower at this time of the year. They're relatively inexpensive for what they are because they're really long lasting. So how long would you expect these as cut flowers? Three, to last? four, five weeks sometimes. Oh, that's good, isn't if it? you look after them, and then we can just sort of put a little kick of that stronger colour in there as well. You're going to be able to tell us all the correct names for oh, these. Oh, I can throw me dendrobiums in with me vanders. <laughs> I tell you. And your oncidiums. Oh, Will you get those? I'll throw out? me I'll even give you a catacetum if you're a good egg. <laughs> 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 but they do look spectacularly exotic. They look they, exotic and they give a good bang for their buck, so they're a great thing to make a bunch I for this I couldn't have put it here. better myself, Sam. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, we've got here, they're growing in... They've got these wonderful aerial roots, if you look. You get them on those uh, moth orchids, Phalaenopsis, that you buy as well. And they're covered in sort of... It's called phelogen, if you want the, the sort of posh name for it. But it's like blotting paper and they soak up atmospheric moisture. So they don't need a lot of water at the roots. They cling onto trees in the They wild, do. Right? Are they an epiphyte? Is that they the are correct an term? Epiphyte. Fights the posh word. You're getting more words here than in the Oxford English Dictionary. <laughs> I always say to clients, lazy housekeepers make their orchids last the longest. Because, because they forget to water them. They forget to water them. They're killed.
killed by, with kindness over watering. Yeah. You're but just putting a bit of ribbon around that, then, and that makes sure it's a bit of ribbon sure around just to, to finish it off, and it makes a lovely little bunch just to yeah. present that will last for ages. Wonderful. You can give that to Kate, the yeah. artist. Oh, thank, thank you. For a you. I'm show. thrilled. Now, That's over so here, we're looking at... I mean, this is a classic, isn't it? Tree planting. Now. Yeah, uh, it's a favourite royal pastime. I think <laughs> they must be frustrated that sometimes their gardening goes no further than the first shovel full of earth in. <laughs> I think they're probably quite relieved. Here's the Queen Mother planting a tree, but we've got some footage of Her Majesty, the Queen, being invited to plant a tree in the Jubilee Plantation by her daughter, the Princess Royal. What's this? May I invite you to uh, <laughs> <laughs> final touches to this rather fine oak tree? <laughs> And Her Majesty then went back to turning her compost heap. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want the weather she was expecting either. <laughs> no, quite. But oh, she's actually more knowledgeable, as Kate suggests, she's more knowledgeable about plants and flowers than people give her credit for. Her, her mother was incredibly knowledgeable. Her son is very knowledgeable. Yes. But the Queen's no slouch, surely. She knows what she's talking about. Uh, and, and I think that she's quite passionate about it as well. I don't yeah. think she does anything by half. No. And the significance of an oak? The oak, wonderful English oak tree, and of course, one of the main stalwarts in the Jubilee plantations mm. that have gone up and down the yeah. country this year. Lovely idea. And these, the ones that the Queen's got in Windsor Great Park, you know, the oldest oaks in Windsor Great Park were 400 years old when William the Conqueror came. Think about that. <laughs> and that's a long time. Well, they're the very, very old ones now, the old lions, but they're still alive. And I think some of them were used in the restoration of the castle Not after Not ones the... as old as that, but, yes, they took oaks from yes. Windsor Great Park and used them. In... Let's talk flowers named after royals. Yes, now, the gorgeous, gorgeous Queen Elizabeth here. Spectacular and... Rather fragrant as mm. well. Um, and it's always been a thing of naming roses. I mean, these are Queen Mary, which are an incredible... Now, this one I don't know. Is this a new this one, This is then? a new... This is an Ecuadorian rose that comes over, and they just are. I mean, they look you like they've been fed on meat mm. and two veg, don't they? They do. Look at that. A state and <laughs> kidney pie rose. <laughs> and these are the ones we buy. They're grown four-cut flour at Fretport. That's correct, yes. Yeah. And they're br it's one of the great trades that Ecuador and Colombia have done in an attempt to turn people away from from the drugs yeah. trade is to, to grow fabulous mm. roses and their cut flowers are spectacular. Not a lot of fragrance, but the most beautiful shape. And it opens up to a beautiful big old cabbage, which so is that always was great. The Queen Elizabeth Rose, famous. Queen Elizabeth. Queen Mum. And then we have Elizabeth of Glam's here. Because which... Queen Mum was born in Glam's Castle. Yes, she? exactly. And there's lots of rules when we give flowers to members of the royal family. This is a sort of a typical tied bunch that so we might present. So you've made poses that are to be given to the royal family? Correct, yes, and, and you, you're given and a you list... instructions. You're given a list of guidelines, yeah. so they, they... I mean, it's not dictatorial, you must not, but it's always suggested that you might like to do flowers on a natural stem, Taking the thorns off your roses, presumably. Take the thorns off, have them on a natural stem, not on a wired... You know, the sort of tortured wired bouquets that we see Her Majesty yeah. holding there. Nothing like that. They want something on a natural stem that can sit in water and will be long-lasting and then they will give them to local hospitals. Oh, lovely. And finally, of course, we've seen a lot of this. Yes. I'd call it a lay. I'd a lay or a garland, yeah. and I think any sort of famous oh, person is, oh, is garlanded like... <laughs> <laughs> like they have, I think they're in the, the Solomon Islands at the yes. moment, and I think the... the um, both of them have been garlanded away, and we have fabulous times remembering... There's Prince of Wales getting his there. Oh, it's spectacular, isn't yeah. it? Wonderful. Thank you very much for garlanding me. I'm very <laughs> grateful. <laughs> My thanks to Kate Williams and William and Kate and Simon Lysis. <laughs>